All right. So before we can start talking about climate change, we have to talk about what a climate is. And I'm sure that you've heard the term climate thrown around before, especially in the way of climate change. But when we talk about a climate, basically what you're talking about is the weather over like 30 years. So if you had to summarize the weather, all of the weather in 30 years, that is what the climate is. So for example, one type of climate is a rainforest. And if you had to summarize the climate over 30 years in the Amazon rainforest, you would say it's warm, it's very humid, and it rains a lot. One thing that's important to note about it, the climate in the Amazon rainforest, though, is while over 30 years you would say it's hot and it's humid and it's rainy, there may be days when it's a cool day or there may be days where it's really bright and sunny. That is the weather. So the weather is what happens like every day and you might have a bright sunny day, but the climate is over 30 years. If you had to say, what is it like in the Amazon rainforest? That is the climate, wet, rainy, humid. So that is kind of my beginning introduction into the difference between weather and climate. Weather is what's happening on your head day after day. Climate is the average over 30 years. You can also talk about deserts as a type of climate. Obviously very different than rainforest because that's where the air is actually falling and it's very dry because all the rain fell out in the rainforest. Um, but if you had to summarize the weather at a desert over 30 years, you would say it's dry, high air pressure, um, very little precipitation, not necessarily hot. Remember, um, Antarctica is the world's largest desert. It seems like it's a really snowy place, but that's another misconception, so be careful there. Um, but deserts are dry, very little precipitation. That doesn't mean it can't rain. There may be a day where there's a storm that passes over um, for one reason or another, and it does rain. But in general, if I had to summarize the climate of a desert, I would say that it's dry, very little precipitation, high pressure, and sunny. These are the examples that we talked about last class that you kind of investigated. We are also in a climate. While we're not at the low, um, the low air pressure or the high air pressure, we are still living in a climate. Ours just isn't as predictable as always dry and sunny or always rainy and wet. We are kind of in the middle of um, so the feral cell. Not super important that you know that, but we're kind of right in the middle of cells. So we don't always have high air pressure or always low air pressure. They kind of are always competing. So we get lots of different types of weather. We also have different seasons. So that is our climate. Different seasons is not something that happens in a rainforest really. Um, so that is special to the climate that we live in. I'm gonna start by going over some of the information from last class about the Hadley zones and high and low pressure areas around the globe. So on the left, you can see the sketch of the earth with the equator 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south. And then we are at the latitude of about 45 degrees north so we're a little bit more northern than that northern latitude. So the sun is shining and it hits the earth unevenly because the earth is a sphere. So it shines most directly on the equator where it's going to be the warmest. As the sun shines, it heats up the earth and the air starts to rise because um, warm air is less dense, right? So that's where your warm air is going to rise. Because the air is rising, that is creating low pressure, right? So pressure is the amount of weight that is pressing down on you um, from the air. And if 
some of it's actually getting lifted off of your head. It's going to be less weight on you. So that's going to be the low pressure area. But because it's shining so brightly on that area, it's also going to, the sun, it's also going to evaporate a lot of water, like a puddle on a hot day. So not only is warm air rising, but also a lot of water vapor is getting into the air there. So right around the equator, <clears throat> it's actually not as sunny as you might think it is. It's actually very, very rainy. It's kind of a misconception to think that areas right around the equator are hot and sunny. They're hot, but they're hot and cloudy, really. And that's why we have lots and lots of rainforest there. It's not until you move a little bit away from the equator, either north or south, that you get hot and sunny weather. So if you wanted to go on a vacation to a really hot, sunny place, you shouldn't go directly to the equator because that's where it's going to be hot but cloudy. Okay, so right on the equator, we have low air pressure and we have clouds. So low air pressure is actually associated with cloudy weather generally. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the heat, but more with the clouds. So low air pressure is generally associated with a cloudy type of day. So once all of that water has rained out of the air, the air is going to start to move. And it's moving because that warm, moist air at the equator is still rising and kind of pushing it out of the way. So it's going to start to move. And now the air doesn't have any water in it, so it's not really going to rain in these areas. Once it gets further away um, from the equator, the air is going to be relatively cool. Remember, we have to remember these as relative terms because 30 degrees north is about where Florida is. And to us, that is not cool air. Um, but relative to the equator, it is cooler air. So at about 30 degrees north and about 30 degrees south, the air is going to start sinking. It's relatively cooler air, and it's dry. And because it is dry, that means it's not really going to rain. And that's why we'll have our um, deserts at about these latitudes. So these cells, as well as the ones that are in the other parts of the Earth, which hopefully you caught on the Ed Puzzle, are what are going to start creating some of our different climates. So then I also had you guys look at just the United States map and look at high and low pressures. Because while there's like a major low pressure system all around the equator, and there's high pressure systems at different latitudes throughout the Earth, there are also these smaller systems that can move on a smaller scale. And these smaller systems are what weather is. So while the big overarching ones um, and the big cells around the planet kind of determine the climate. These smaller ones are what determines our weather. So I had you look at this map. And in this map, you can see that there's a low pressure system right over Illinois and Indiana. And there's a couple other high pressure systems throughout the area. If you've ever used a topographic map before or learned about them, basically each line represents the same amount of elevation on a topographic map. On this map, each line represents the same amount of pressure. Okay. So I told you that this was a map from last week where it was a pretty nice day in Vermont, but then the next two days it was raining. And that's because this low pressure system moved right over Vermont. So here is the map from Monday of this week you'll notice that there was this low pressure sitting over us. Monday was kind of a dreary, kind of rainy, cloudy day. Um, and then you can see that there's a high pressure system that's sitting up in Canada and a low pressure system down here in Texas. So when meteorologists or scientists who study weather look at these maps, they can use these systems to try to predict what our weather is going to be like. 
and know that systems move from west to east across the country. So I'm really hoping that on Wednesday, which is when you should be watching this video, that that high pressure system that's up in Canada is going to move its way over and sit right on top of us um, here on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday so that we have some nice sunny weather. And maybe that low pressure system that's down in Texas is going to move east and sit above Tennessee um, and Kentucky there and maybe give them some cloudy weather. So you can um, test out my, you can see my weather prediction and see how it, see how it uh, pans out. So Nala here is demonstrating getting ready for the weather. So the weather is what's happening every day. The weather can change a lot, especially if you live in a climate like ours. And basically, the weather is how you pick your outfit for the day. Are you going to wear a raincoat? Are you going to wear a tank top like it was um, on Sunday? What are you going to wear because of what it's like outside? So while the weather will tell Nala that she needs to wear her raincoat one day, the climate, which is the average weather over a long time, tells you what you need to have in your wardrobe. So she can't just have a raincoat because it does more than just rain here. So on the right, you'll see she has her raincoat and her towel, and that's to dry her off um, on rainy days. In the middle, she has her winter boots, very fashionable um, because it does snow here. On the left, you can see she's got her hiking backpack and her frisbee for sunny, hot days and then in the upper left is her height um her hunting gear because we live in a climate that is warm enough um, and the right temperature to have deer and turkeys and things like that so she needs that for the fall so the climate will tell you what you should have in your wardrobe and the weather will tell you what your outfit should be for the day all right so we know that weather is what's happening on your head each day and climate is the generalization of the weather in the area but we need to talk about what influences climate what makes one place be a rainforest one place be a desert and one place get seasons and all these crazy different high and low pressure systems so i have already given you two out of the four things that can influence a climate so i want you to take a second and try to think of four things that influence the climate. What makes one place be really hot and one place be really cold? What makes one place be really wet and dry? Um, write down four things that you think influence a climate. All right, so really all of this should be review, but we're taking everything we know now and putting it together to try to figure out what things influence a climate. So, you have your list, I will show you mine, and then you're going to watch a video on it. So, what influences a climate? The first thing that you should definitely have is air pressure. And that was what we did last class, talking about how the global air is circulating through um, the globe and creating high and low pressure systems. That creates weather. And if you have a high pressure system sitting over you, constantly, you're going to probably be a desert. So that's the first thing that influences climate. The second thing is proximity to a body of water. So we've talked about this. Why does proximity to a body of water influence the climate? Think about the discussion about Burlington versus Essex and Lake Champlain. The third thing, which is kind of obvious, is latitude. If you're at the equator or if you're at the North Pole, you're going to be in a different climate because the sun is hitting the earth um, with, a, um, with more strength down at the equator than it is up at the North Pole because the earth is a sphere. And then the fourth one, which we haven't talked about but should be kind of obvious, is elevation. If you are living at a place that is a high elevation above sea level, like on top of a mountain, it's going to be colder up there. That is a different type of climate than if you live down at the sea level. So you're going to watch a video um, that will walk you through each of these. 
climate refers to the average long-term atmospheric conditions of a region. Climate varies across the world, producing distinct climate zones. There are many factors that create these differences. Latitude, location north or south of the equator, plays a major role in influencing climate. The curvature of the Earth means that the sun heats the equator more strongly than the poles. As a result, the nearer you get to the equator, the warmer the climate tends to be. But it's the water on our planet that contains the most heat, more than the land and the atmosphere put together. Covering over 70% of the Earth's surface, water absorbs the sun's heat and stores it effectively. Ocean currents carry this heat around the planet. The Gulf Stream carries the heat of a million power stations to northern Europe. Without it, the climate would change dramatically, becoming much colder. Large bodies of water maintain a stable temperature, minimizing changes in evaporation and the highs and lows of atmospheric pressure. This produces less varied weather at the coast. Air rises vertically at the equator, starting a cycle that produces six giant global wind cells. Wind which originates over water carries moisture, while winds which originate over land will be drier. This means that wind carries heat and moisture around the planet and stabilizes regional climate. Altitude is the height above sea level. Or elevation. As altitude increases, air becomes thinner and is less able to absorb and retain heat. As a result, areas of high altitude are cold and dry. Most of the influences on climate are natural, but humans can affect climate too. We do this by diverting natural water flows and impacting upon the Earth's atmosphere. These complex natural and man-made factors influence long-term regional atmospheric conditions, creating the distinct climate zones that characterize our planet. All right, so that is it for new material today. This is a lot to take in. I understand that. It's big topics and we're not together, so it's harder to understand. But by now you should be able to tell me why different parts of the world have different climates and why some places are cold, hot, dry, wet, etc, etc. If you did not do or finish or did incorrectly the assignment for Monday, I need you to go back and redo it. There are certain proficiencies that you need to accomplish by the end of the school year so that you can pass quarter four and if you didn't do that assignment, then you are not showing me that you understand the material. So um, in order to pass the class, you do need to do that assignment and do it correctly. So after today, maybe after watching the Ed Puzzle um, from last class, you do need to go back and revise that assignment um, to make sure that we're good on that. All right. Miss you guys. Hope you're doing well. I hope, for my sake, that there's it's nice out today um, and there's a high-pressure system since that was my prediction. All right, talk to you later. Bye.